The Maselli Group presents seminars and workshops, advanced presentation skills for financial professionals with Frank Maselli, financial industry expert and author of the best-selling book, Seminars, The Emotional Dynamic. Episode 9, Respect and the Power Open. Hi, I'm Frank Maselli. Welcome back to Episode 9, Respect. Can you do business with people who don't respect you? I think the answer is a resounding no, and why would you want to? So how do you create and grab an audience's respect right there at the very beginning of the event, and how do you keep respect throughout the entire workshop or seminar? That's what we're going to talk about, capturing and keeping respect. The first piece of good news is this, there is something called the teacher image. What does that mean? It means just by being the person in front of the room holding the chalk or the flipper, you are the teacher. And there is a certain innate, you know, limbic brain memory of us being in school and that person uh, deserves our respect. So that's great. You, you're coming into the process with respect already built in in many cases. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful starting point, in other words. The second one, and this is a big one, is to be introduced to the audience. Now, some people say, well, Frank, these are my clients. They've known me for 30 years. You know what? I don't care if these are your relatives. I don't care if it's your spouse. I want somebody to introduce me to that room. All professional speakers, all master presenters are introduced to the room. It doesn't need to be overblown. It doesn't need to be complicated. It's a very simple structure. I'll show it to you in just one second. But the process of being introduced sets the audience's expectations and frankly they think that makes sense audiences expect the star to be introduced and you are the star of the show the the, the talent as we like to say so be introduced okay how does the introduction go very simple point one point two point three please welcome name simple example Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker tonight brings a wealth of information to the subject of investing. He's been a financial planner for over 20 years. He's now a senior vice president with XYZ, and he's written a book on financial planning for the average investor. Please welcome our guest, Mr. Frank Maselli. Nice, simple, nothing, nothing more complicated than that. Completely different, completely different from the introduction that I got at the Patuxent River Lions Club one night, which, by the way, I, I recommend doing captive audience seminars. They're a lot of fun. The lions, the moose, the elk. We call those doing the mammals. That's the mammals on the speaker circuit. Some people call it the rubber chicken circuit. I did a seminar at the Patuxent River Lions Club. I walked in. Um, the president of the Lions Club came up to meet me, and he had been drinking since 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I handed him my introduction card, because I always carry a, an introduction card. It's very important. And he dropped it and stepped on it. And I said, oh, I'm in trouble. Okay? And he gets up at the end of the meeting and he says, okay, uh, we've got a guest speaker here tonight. His name is uh, Frank Mazzucci, Frank Mazzucci, I don't know, some guinea name like that. I kid you not. Okay? And uh, he's a stockbroker, so watch your wallets, everybody. He's going to probably try to sell you something. And after he's done, we've got the ladies' auxiliary, so everybody hang around. I'm going to turn it over to Frank. Maybe he could hurry it up a little bit. That's called the power introduction. You just really feel so good, you know? Not good. Simple. Point one, point two, point three, please welcome name. Name is the last thing they hear as you take the stage. It just sets the tone. Okay, now, the opening. This is big. What do you do once you're introduced to that room? The first couple of minutes of that event are so important. I, I, I can't even overstate this, so let me just keep it simple, all right? This is a graphic representation of the workshop timeline. You will never know the moment when somebody in that audience makes the decision to work with you. You just won't know. Some people will like you right in the beginning. Some people won't like you till the very end. So you don't know. What you do know is that the opening impression is absolutely essential for success. The first impression you give that audience needs to be a powerful impression if you want to maintain respect. There are many ways to open a presentation, many ways to open an event. Plain vanilla. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. My name is Frank Maselli. I'm a vice president with Schmuckety Schmuck, and, and we're here to talk about investing tonight. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me and what I can do for you. Bam. Dead wrong amateur presenter, okay? 
That's what everybody does. That's every financial presentation in the entire country starts like that. So you're not going to do that because you're going to be different and better. Uh, joke, just, just say no to jokes, <laughs> all right? Jokes are the narcotic of the amateur speaker. They're just the absolute worst possible thing you can do in the beginning of an event. And I, as I said earlier, professional presenters don't tell jokes. All right, it's just, it's totally an amateur thing. And, and by the way, you're not good at telling jokes, so don't even bother. There are only five people in the entire world that are good at telling jokes, and I'm not one of them, and neither are you. So don't bother. Jokes are very hard. And it's like fumbling the kickoff of the Super Bowl. Why would you do that? Don't do it. Quote, quotes are nice. I throw them in. I've sprinkled in a few quotes to other episodes. I don't open with a quote, but it is nice to have some quotes. It attaches you to smart people. Nice to do. Audience participation. Um, sometimes when it's a very relaxed crowd, when it's a very non, kind of a, a non-purposeful event, in other words, like purely an educational event, which is fine. Many of those are very valid, great way to build credibility. I'll open with audience participation, but not in an event where I want them to actually do something afterwards. We will have audience participation. I like audience participation, but not in the beginning. When you do it in the beginning, it, it sends a message that says you want participation, and what could be bad is you get a lot of participation all night long, and that's not good. I, I don't want that kind of loss of control. Uh, alarming statistic. I love alarming statistics. In fact, I used something, and I used it in, in an earlier episode, the episode on understanding when we talked about, um, you know, constructing the hourglass. I used something called a cascading series of alarming statistics. You build one. The problem we're facing will affect 165 million Americans. It will wipe out $15 trillion. And, and you, you bridge a, a whole bunch of alarming statistics together, and that makes a nice, powerful opening. It's something to consider, and I do use it quite frequently. Imaginary situation I only use in California. Close your eyes and travel with me to a place, a distant place, a wonderful place. Now, only when, you know, you're smoking dope can you get away with that. So don't do that. My favorite is outrageous behavior. This is a tricky one. You've got to be very uh, cautious about this. It works for me. I found my style over 30 years of doing this, somehow, I don't know, it, I, I can do this. But don't you do this. This is, a, this is a very dangerous opening. We'll skip this. Let me show you what you should do. Let me show you the power opening, a sample power opening. The power opening is where you grab them by the throat. You get them excited. It makes you look different, and it sets the tone for the entire evening, the entire event. Let me show you an example, okay? Stay with me here for one second, because we're going to do a little acting now. All right. So I've just been introduced. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest, Mr. Frank Maselli. Now watch what happens. I'm not talking. Here I go. Come on. Okay, now, hold on. What's happening here? I, I'm not saying, I wouldn't be saying this to the audience. I come out in total silence, and I look at them, and I've got this sort of a, mild look of disgust, which I've mastered over the years. It's sort of a New York thing. I don't know if you're worthy yet to hear what I have to say, but watch this. Okay, this is a simple opening. It's called the dollar bill opening. I come out in silence. I don't say a word. By the way, silence, and we'll talk about this later. Silence, extremely powerful dramatic technique. Professional master presenters use silence. They understand the power of silence. Amateurs have to fill the air with sound. Professionals know how to create that drama when there's silence. So I come out in silence, haven't said a word, haven't said good evening, welcome to the seminar, nothing. I'm standing there, I'm looking at them. Here we go. What is this? What is this? Anybody tell me? Dollar bill, right? Dollar bill? Wrong. Wrong. This is your entire retirement nest egg. This is everything you have saved and invested and put aside and scrimped and done without for the last 40 years. And now this has to last you 35 years in retirement. This is it. The whole ball of wax here, folks. Except Uncle Sam wants his piece. 
Inflation wants its piece. Drug costs, medical costs, going up at five times the rate of core inflation. They want their piece. The kids move home. They want their piece now. And this is your piece. This is all that's left. Are you happy with this? I can't imagine you're happy with this. My name is Frank Maselli. I'm a vice president with Blowhard and Boggle, and I am here to help you rebuild your retirement nest egg. Are you with me? Now, okay. Different? Definitely different. A little more dramatic? Yes. Is there acting involved? Okay, yes, yes. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I could make the case for you that if you want to be serious about this, you go to acting school and you'll learn how to do stuff like this. But simple dollar bill opening. It's on my website. Download it. Try it. Have fun. You don't need to be that dramatic. But, and by the way, if you rip up a real dollar, some people get upset because this is like a federal crime or something. It, it's a low risk. Nobody's going to take you away in handcuffs. But if you're upset by that, you know, go photocopy. Well, that's illegal, too. So don't, don't do that either. Get a fake dollar. Do something. Don't upset anybody. But give it a shot. It'll work for you. The power opening, extremely useful. Find a way to capture that audience right up front. So let's go back. Audience control, another essential point. I do not want that audience to run amok on me. I want to keep tight control of the audience. I don't let questions take me too far afield during the body of the seminar. I will take questions during the body, but they have to be questions of clarification. And if somebody asks a question while well, I'm on a topic, I'm talking about something, and this will happen to you. Somebody will raise their hand and say, Frank, what about, what about X, Y, Z? Do you like that stuff? It's completely out of left field. has nothing to do with what you're talking about. I will gently deflect it. I'll say, you know, it's, it's a great question. kind of has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So why don't you see me after class, and we'll talk about that. Oh, the see me after class thing, very powerful powerful, very subliminal, you know, see me after class, but it scares the heck out of people. So keep control of the audience. Don't let them run crazy. And finally, use your words. This is interesting. When I gave a presentation, I used to be with a company called Payne Weber. I was there for 10 years, had a great time. Payne Weber is now UBS. And I used to give these presentations nationwide, and I used to quote research from our senior strategist, a guy named Ed Kirshner, one of the great geniuses on Wall Street, one of the greatest strategists you'll ever know. Ed would write these reports, and I would get up, and I'd give the seminar, and I'd say, Ed Kirshner thinks this, and Dr. Maury Harris thinks this. And then one day it dawned on me, Ed Kirshner's not here. And Dr. Maury Harris, our chief economist, he's not here either. I'm here. I'm the expert representing Payne Weber. And so I shifted gears, and I would say to the audience, folks, the work I've done and everything I've seen indicates to me that inflation is going to be less than 5% for the next three years. Okay, wh what work? What work did I do? The work I did was I read Ed Kirshner's report. The audience doesn't need to know that. The audience needs to have confidence in you, not some third party hidden off in the ivory tower economist or strategist. They will never get to meet. You're the expert. You're the person in front of the room. Now, I don't claim credit for somebody else's work. That's, that's intellectually inappropriate, and I would never do that. But I have done some work. I've done my own research. I've done my own homework, and I am speaking with authority. I have opinions. And one of the nice things to do, one of the fun things to do, is occasionally disagree with the experts. You know, uh, uh, Ben Bernanke is talking about inflation as one of the greatest problems, but I think he's completely missing what is the most significant problem we're facing, which is deflation. Wait a minute. Who the heck am I to disagree with Ben Bernanke? Well, I am on that stature. I think of myself in that way, and I want the audience to think of me in that way. So occasionally disagreeing with an expert is fine, very good to do. All right, all of this blended together creates an atmosphere where the people in that room sit back and go, wow, this guy was pretty impressive. This was very sharp. I have confidence in this person. I respect him as a professional. He is someone who can solve my problems. Very, very powerful. Don't move forward without the audience's respect. And there's some very, very simple techniques for how to generate that.